Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Asia Gore. We're following a developing story. President Trump's former campaign chairman has surrendered following an indictment today related to Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election. CBS's Weijia Zhang reports from D.C., where Paul Manafort will make his first court appearance. Paul Manafort covered his face as he left his home in Virginia this morning. Mr. Manafort has no comment. The 68-year-old arrived at the FBI field office in Washington, D.C. to surrender himself to authorities. Manafort and his former business partner, Rick Gates, are facing 12 counts, including conspiracy against the United States, conspiracy to launder money, seven counts of failure to file reports of foreign bank and financial accounts, being an unregistered agent of a foreign power, and making false statements. The indictment alleges Manafort and Gates hid their work as agents of the Ukrainian government and its political parties and tried to cover up millions of dollars they made from that work. It adds a, a substantial layer of complexity. I think just the Ukraine and the Russian connection um, could add months and months to this investigation. Manafort and Gates will be brought here to the federal courthouse in Washington, D.C. later today, where they will be arraigned during their first court appearance. Special counsel Robert Mueller's office revealed Monday that George Papadopoulos, a foreign policy advisor to President Trump during the campaign, pled guilty to making false statements to the FBI. The Washington Post reported in August that Papadopoulos sent an email to Trump campaign officials in March 2016, offering to set up a meeting with Russian leadership, including President Putin. Weijia Jiang at CBS News, Washington, D.C. President Trump tweeted Sunday suggesting the Russia investigation is meant to derail the GOP push for tax reform. Meanwhile, Puerto Rico is canceling a controversial $300 million contract with Montana's Whitefish Energy. CBS's David Begno reports from Whitefish. It's interfering with, uh, with everything, it's, and it doesn't go uh, towards the best interest of the people of Puerto Rico. Governor Ricardo Rosselló has praised PREPA's decision to cancel the contract with Whitefish Energy. But San Juan Mayor Carmen Yulín Cruz, who was an early and fierce critic of the contract, says it needs to be voided entirely due to a single clause. The people of Puerto Rico would still have to pay something called a reasonable profit on top of everything that they have already been charged. The outcry began after revelations that a $300 million no-bid contract to repair Puerto Rico's devastated power grid had been awarded to Whitefish Energy. At the time of Hurricane Maria, it was said to be a two-person operation based in Whitefish, Montana, the hometown of U.S. Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke. We went there looking for the company's headquarters. We found what's believed to be the headquarters here in rural Montana, but it looks like a private residence. This two-bedroom house in a remote area of northwestern Montana is where the energy company calls home. After signing the deal, Whitefish hired 350 workers, and the company says it was moving more than 500 linemen to the island this week. The head of PREPA, Ricardo Ramos, has defended the $300 million deal, and on Sunday emphasized there was nothing illegal about it. In a statement, Whitefish said the decision will only delay what the people of Puerto Rico want and deserve, to have the power restored quickly. There can be no distraction whatsoever that alters the course of action so that we can elevate and restore our energy system in Puerto Rico. The governor is warning this could result in a lawsuit from Whitefish. Now, we called PREPA to find out if they might void the contract, and they told us no, they will be canceling it. By the way, Whitefish Energy first got in contact with power officials in Puerto Rico because the Whitefish CEO sent a message via the social media site LinkedIn. David Begno, CBS News, Los Angeles. The head of Puerto Rico's power company estimates the cancellation will delay power restoration by 10 to 12 weeks. Here in Montana, we now know the name of the 63-year-old man killed in a rollover crash west of Huntley Saturday afternoon. The Yellowstone County coroner identified the victim as Richard Fuchs of Shepard. Fuchs was riding in an eastbound Chevy pickup on Highway 312. Montana Highway Patrol reports the pickup veered off the road for an unknown reason and rolled multiple times. Both occupants, including a 39-year-old Billings man, were ejected. 
Neither was wearing a seat belt. The younger victim was transported to the hospital in unknown condition. Speed is considered a factor in the crash. An airman from Maelstrom Air Force Base is lucky to be alive today after an accidental shooting over the weekend. It happened at a residence near 14th Avenue South and 7th Street South in Great Falls. Frank Rosette was getting ready to go to bed when he heard a loud bang and saw his TV fall over. Rosette first thought his TV had blown a fuse, but then realized he was bleeding and had been peppered by a shotgun blast. Neighbors and the person who fired the gun came to help and called 911. Now that Rosette is home from the hospital, the seriousness of the situation is sinking in. I sleep up against the wall and that's right where my face would have been. So that could have been seriously dangerous. And if I had been six inches forward grabbing my phone, I would have taken a direct point blank shot to the rib cage. And that would have been obviously terrible too. So I'm definitely counting my blessings that this was all, that all I got was just some superficial wounds, some cuts and bruises that'll heal up in a couple of days. 20 year old Gavin Key faces charges of criminal endangerment and minor in possession of alcohol. A Billings family is still searching for their son after he went missing on Friday. 13-year-old Elias Miguel Nava was last seen leaving R Riverside Middle School. Nava is 4 feet 7 inches tall with dirty blonde hair and hazel eyes. He was last seen wearing black shoes, blue or black jeans, and a black shirt. Anyone with information should contact authorities. An investigation is underway today into the cause of a house fire that burned over four hours in River Valley County. It happened Sunday morning at a home in Victor. Crews responded to a home on U.S. Highway 93 around 2 a.m. Officials say the fire started near the stove. An excavator removed the roof of the house as crews worked close to four hours to control the flames. The home is a total loss, though thankfully no one was injured. We turn now to the weather scene with Ed McIntosh, and tonight the story is trick or treat. That's right. Well, tomorrow night we're going to build up to it. Today we're going to take a look at what uh, Halloween is like across much of the region. As uh, in ha in Missoula, uh, take a look. Uh, this one has to, with some of the lowest variations as far as temperatures go, but still some snow. And notice 1973. That won't keep coming up time and time. Bozeman and Bo uh, Bozeman also looking at some colder temperatures, as cold as six below. But you notice that snow back from 70 as well. Butte, 11 below is the coldest we've ever had there. That's the coldest I could find in the contiguous U.S. of the major reporting stations. Helena, 5 below, and also some of that snow, 1973 were to repeat itself, we'd have some pretty cold temperatures and some snow around. And also those 73s keep popping up around Great Falls. Closer look at the weather coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Ed. Ownership of a Bozeman bank fund founded nearly a century ago, is now changing hands. A Glacier Bank Corps is acquiring First Security Bank, which was founded in Bozeman back in 1919. It's the largest locally headquartered bank with $1 billion in total assets. First Security has locations in five southern Montana communities in Gallatin County and in six agriculture-intensive northern Montana communities. Glacier's website says it does business in seven western states. Glacier already owns Big Sky Western Bank offices in the Bozeman area. The firm says it will combine Big Sky Western and First Security locations under the new name First Security Bank of Bozeman. And in northern Montana, the offices will combine with Glacier's First Bank of Montana, adopting the new name First Bank of Montana. Glacier cited a fast-growing population and economy as top reasons for the acquisition. The combined banks will now control almost 35 percent of the Bozeman banking market. Before we get to break, more than 100 new tiles are now in place at the Montana Veterans Memorial in Great Falls. 33 of the new tiles added represent Blackfeet Warriors. New tiles are added twice a year before Memorial Day and Veterans Day. Members from various areas of our country's military history will be honored for Veterans Day November 11th. University of Providence President Anthony Aretz, a retired U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, will speak at this year's event. Still ahead on the new news, flooding in northeastern states leads to power outages and even water rescues. Details when we come back. But first, Ed has our weather forecast. Stay with us. You're watching MTN News with Asia Gore, Storm Trekker Weather with Ed McIntosh, and Farm and Ranch News from the Northern Egg Network. This is the news.